In 2016, Credit Suisse updated their summary of world wealth distribution by publishing this wealth pyramid. It shows how the roughly $256 trillion of financial assets are distributed among various segments of the population. The group at Credit Suisse did not include the notional value of derivatives in this study. I won't be discussing those in this video. The notional value of those instruments, at least the ones that are known of, are of such mind-boggling magnitude as to be classified as ludicrous. For the sake of this video, let's just focus on the financial assets that Credit Suisse included in their study. At the very bottom of the pyramid are the segment of the population who hold less than $10,000 worth of financial wealth. There are about 3.5 billion people in this segment, and all totaled, they command $6.1 trillion in financial wealth. I will emphasize that in my mind, I put the word wealth here in quotations. After all, financial wealth, as it is used here, means that it is owed by somebody, and so it is natural to ask the question, who owes it? If we are going to create a total picture of world wealth, and we say that everyone has claims on everyone else, how can we call it wealth? It's a little akin to the situation where you try to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. Anyway, let's put that question aside for a moment and continue with this discussion. So this bottom group constitutes 73% of world population. The next group, categorized by owning $10,000 to $100,000 of quote-unquote wealth, has $879 uh, million in their ranks, which is about 18.5% of world population. $29.1 trillion of financial assets are held by this group. Next on the pyramid is the group holding over $100,000 of financial assets per person, but less than a million dollars. There are only 365 million people in this group, or about 7.5% of global population. This group has claim to $103.9 trillion of financial assets. At the very top are those with over $1 million of financial assets apiece. There are only 33 million people in this segment, making it only 0.7% of total world population. Thus, less than 1% of the world's population are millionaires, in the traditional sense of the word. This segment as a whole has claimed to $116 trillion worth of financial assets. Now, I did this exercise in the past as part of a video titled, Where is the Gold? But I will do it again here to make a point. Throughout history, there has been between 5 and 6 billion ounces of gold mined. Of this, about a billion ounces is claimed by governments and their central banks. Some of it has been used for industrial purposes, too. There are about 4.1 billion ounces of gold held by private individuals and families for wealth storage purposes. I'm showing here how that gold would be distributed amongst the different groups, assuming it is distributed in the same percentages as the financial wealth. Assuming this distribution for known above-ground gold, we have about 1.9 billion ounces going to the top group, 1.7 billion going to the second group, about half a billion ounces going to the third group, and 98 million ounces going to the bottom group. Now, in truth, this distribution is probably not accurate. I'd argue that more gold probably concentrates towards the top and also towards the bottom. The top group contains some very wealthy families who understand the importance of gold in protecting wealth and privacy. And the bottom group contains many people in the third world who value gold more than those in the middle groups who have been brainwashed into believing that gold is a fallow asset and thus should be shunned. But putting that argument aside, we can determine the amount of above-ground gold available to individuals in each group. At the very top, there are about 57 ounces of gold per person. So if you own more than 57 ounces of gold, you should celebrate. You are a member of the elite group. The next group down would have about 5 ounces apiece. The next group down from there would have about half an ounce each. Finally, at the very bottom, the poorest of the poor would have less than a twentieth of an ounce apiece. Now, keep this image in your mind for a few moments. I'd like to segue into something that happened between me and my preteen son today, which inspired this video. I'm going to come back to this pyramid in a minute to make a point. 
If you've watched enough of my past videos, you probably know that I pay my kids their allowance in silver. My preteen son gets a silver half dollar every week. This is not for doing chores. Chores are expected as his way of contributing to the family. The allowance is for teaching him about money. So every week, he gets a half a dollar face value, which is about three-tenths of an ounce of silver, which he can put away. Every so often, there is something that he will want to buy, and so he will trade his silver for cash needed to buy the item. But in general, he just accumulates it because, well, he loves the silver. He especially likes the times when he can trade up. Every time he has three half dollars, he will trade it for an ounce of silver bullion. He likes Sunshine Mint one ounce bars, and so he tends to trade for those. And he's been collecting the bars for some time now. Every few weeks or so, he gets a new one. To make a long story short, today he took a tally of his bars and asked me if he could trade some for gold. I said, sure, how many do you have? He told me 18, and so I told him that that would be enough to trade for a quarter ounce gold eagle. He eagerly handed me his bars, and when I placed the quarter ounce eagle in his hand, he told me that he was never going to sell it. I believe him. He's managed to hold on to a tenth ounce worth of platinum that he traded up for for over a year now and is showing no signs of wanting to part with it to buy some crap at Toys R Us. I'm quite proud that he's been able to save up so much. When you think about it, a quarter ounce of gold is really quite an accomplishment. If there are four billion ounces of above ground private investment gold, when you consider that the world population is eight billion people, that's only about half an ounce of gold for every man, woman, and child on the planet Earth. And my son already has half of that. So how does this story relate to the Global Wealth Pyramid? Let's go back to that now. Remember how I said that the financial wealth of the world was an illusion because the wealth was actually a claim on someone else? You can't look at all the financial assets spread out over the entire population and consider it wealth. When everyone owes everyone else, the math says that it must all net out to zero. The exception would be the replacement value of all building and equipment, which is substantially less than the total reflected by the $256 trillion worth of claims on it. If all of the $256 trillion worth of financial claims were to suddenly start bidding on all real items with the intent of acquiring them, then we'd find out what the real value of those claims is. By contrast, the gold is what it is. It's gold. When we look at it in terms of ounces, the total number of ounces that can be allocated across all groups is fixed. It's about 4.1 billion ounces in total, no matter who possesses it. Right now, we have $4.1 billion, worth of ounce, uh, billion ounces worth of gold, which represents just shy of $5 trillion worth of wealth if it's valued at current spot prices. This is only 2% of total financial wealth. And as I've stated, the financial wealth really is an illusion. Only the land, plant and equipment, and the gold represents real value. So what happens if the elite of the world become nervous about the real value of their financial assets and they want to lock in some of the wealth by owning a higher percentage of gold? Suppose that they would like to own enough gold to cover 10% of the financial assets. Can they do it easily without writing off the value of their financial assets? In other words, can they do it without causing the price of gold to skyrocket, in effect, writing down the value of their financial assets relative to gold? In a simple word, no. Big oil interests tried to accumulate more physical gold in the open market in the 1970s, and the price of gold went parabolic. The big money interests back then learned an important lesson. Gold is very tightly held, and if the desire is to increase gold holdings, then the right way to do it is to obtain freshly mined gold via futures contracts. This allows the big money interest to accumulate the gold that they want in small chunks, without running the price. As it stands now, world mine supply is about 3,000 metric tons per year. This is about 96 million ounces. So let's change this chart and assume that current gold is held very tightly. Let's see how much freshly mined supply is available and how that might be distributed to the people interested in accumulating more of it. This picture should really put things into perspective. When we consider the real wealth of the world, 
It doesn't matter what happens to the dollar value of all financial instruments. All of the credit owned by one person is owed by another. Even the dollar is a fantasy concept that represents an empty promise made. No, the real wealth of the world is represented by the total amount of land, which is constant, plus the value of all buildings and equipment, plus durable commodities such as gold and silver. When we look at the increase in gold per year and visualize how it might be allocated amongst the people in the various groups, we see a very shocking picture unfold. The poorest in the world would probably accumulate little if any gold. Whatever they accumulate is probably not measurable. Any gold owned by individuals in this group would be considered precious indeed. The next group up might be able to accumulate a hundredth of an ounce per person per year. They would be lucky to have a full ounce before they died of old age. The second to the top most wealthy group in the world, the group consisting of 7.5% of the world's population, might be able to accumulate about a tenth of an ounce per year per person of freshly mined gold. Even when we consider the people at the very top of the pyramid, the 0.7% of the world who control nearly half of the world's financial wealth, even they could only accumulate about 1.3 ounces of gold per person per year on average. Again, this is dealing with just the averages. There will be some people in this group who don't accumulate any because they've been convinced that gold is a barbarous relic with no value. But there will also be some who will accumulate far more. But in general, we know one thing for certain. If there are 8 billion people in the world and 96 million ounces of gold mined per year, that gives us an increase in the world gold supply of only 0.01 ounces of gold per year per person. That's a tenth of a tenth ounce eagle. That's how much the real gold supply increases per year on a per capita basis. If anyone in the world wants to increase their gold position, they can either bid for this freshly mined gold or try to bid the existing gold out of the hands of the people who already own it and value it highly. My son, because he was patient and saved his wealth in drips and drabs, is somewhere just below the elite group in terms of his real wealth savings rate. And if you're able to accumulate a gold coin or two of any given size in any given year, that means that you're pretty close to the top two. This wealth might not become manifest this year, but eventually it will. And that's truly something to think deeply about.